We're comparing six of the most used WordPress page builders to see which one outputs the cleanest HTML. Oxygen, Breakdance, Gutenberg, Spectra, Divi, and Elementor. If you care about performance, maintainability, or just want less junk code, this video is for you. My name is Kevin from Oxygen. Let's get started. So we have Oxygen open right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a basic setup for all of these six page builders that we're working with. So let's go ahead and set this up in Oxygen. We're going to add a grid. Then we're going to add another div that is our grid item. And we're going to duplicate that. Then within our first grid item, we're going to add an image. And for the image, we are going to choose this cheesecake. Okay, next we're going to add a text element, set it to a heading. We'll give it the heading class. And let's just go ahead and change the heading to say, welcome to the bakery. And last, we are going to add a button. We're going to sign up the class of button and we're just going to say order today. And the last thing I want to do is in our parent container. So we see our parent container here. I'm going to add an ID that says section start. I'm going to add this ID on every single page builder we work with. We want to see how deep this section is from the body. And we also want to compare all the elements inside of that section. So this is our basic setup and we're going to kind of replicate this across all the builders. If I want to be technical, I could actually get rid of this container right here. So let's go ahead and try that. Okay. Because we actually don't need that container in oxygen. Some builders require you to have it, but we don't. So we have our grid with an image and then a grid item. So now let's go ahead and view it on the front end. And we're going to inspect the page. And let's look for our section start div. So it's right here, right below the body. So that's exactly what we wanted. That's exactly what we used in the builder. Let's go ahead and look at some of the other elements in here. So we have our image class right away. So image div body, that's exactly how we have it set up in oxygen. And then we have this div here that uses an H2 and an A tag for our button. So this is a one for one as to what we created within oxygen. Underneath the body, we have our section start with our image, our div element that contains our other two elements, which is the heading and the button. This is a perfect example of lean output on the front end. There's no extra divs or elements that are required to make this design. It works perfectly. So now let's go ahead and look at breakdance. So we're going to start off with adding a section and then we're going to add an image. Then we will add a div with our heading and our button. And now let's populate all this content. So I'm going to select the section, we're going to set the layout to grid because that's what we've been doing. We'll set it to items per row to two. We'll go ahead and set a background color. Let's now choose our image. And we're going to update our text. Welcome to the bakery. We're going to change this to an H2. And then for our click here, we're going to say order today with a link. And we'll just one quick thing here real quick. We'll go ahead and center everything and add a gap of 20 pixels. So let's save this and now let's view it on the front end. Actually, let me go back really quickly into breakdance because I forgot to add the ID section start. Okay. Now let's exit to the front end and inspect this. And we can see that from the body, we are right into our section start. That's perfect. Now we'll see an extra div here for our section container. It's pretty common to have a intersection or a container section within a section because you might be adding some background color padding or a background image. So this does add an extra div element, but it's not something that is terrible. It's pretty common. It's acceptable. So now we have the image element, which is, again, is exactly what we had in the builder. And then we have our column div that we created and we have a H2 element, which is good. And now we have a div with an A tag and a span. So if you remember, oxygen just had an anchor tag. It's not as clean as oxygen, but it's still very workable and good to use. Next, let's go ahead and look at Gutenberg. So we're using just Gutenberg, no other extensions installed. We are going to start off with adding a grid. Okay. And before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and change this to section start. We'll give it a nice background color. There we go. And now let's add an image block. We'll go ahead and select our picture. And then we want to add a heading followed by a button. 
Now let's open up the document overview, and I believe we need to add a div here as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, whoops, I duplicated the button. Oh. Let's go ahead and add that extra group. So let's look under here for a group. It's just going to be a singular. And let's go back here. We'll put our heading inside of that group. We'll put our buttons inside of that group. Okay, and now we can say, welcome to the bakery. We'll set our buttons to say, order today. We'll set the link to that. And let's go ahead and change our background. Perfect. And then let's adjust our grid because it's a little too small. We only need two spots there, okay. We'll set our group to be centered and center that. And we have an extra space there. Just a few more modifications here really quickly. Okay, there we go. So we have it pretty much the same as Oxygen and Breakdance. Let's go ahead and look at it on the front end and inspect it. And we're looking for our section start, which is right here. And we can see that there are one, two, three, four, four additional divs that exist before we get to the body. So this is different than Oxygen and Breakdance, which just went right into the body. Uh, there's some extra div stylings here because of either Gutenberg or the theme that we're using. So let's go ahead and continue looking here. We have our image, which is in a figure. This is our first additional div. And let's go ahead and look at the rest of the layout. So we have a div with our H2, perfect. And then we have a div with a div with our button. So we have two extra divs here, and that's because Gutenberg does the whole block buttons and then the button itself. So overall, Gutenberg didn't do too bad. So next we're going to look at Spectra, which is a popular block library for Gutenberg. So let's add a container. And within that container, we're going to add an image. We're going to use the Spectra blocks, which are slightly blue. We'll select our image from the media library. Then we'll go ahead and add a heading element. And we're going to say, welcome to the bakery. And we need to add a button. So let's go here and do buttons. Oh, that's not quite what I wanted. There we go. Okay, so let's do this really quick, just to be fair. We're going to take the image out of that container, because that's what we've been doing for all our other builders. Then we have our container, the heading, and the buttons. So let's add the ID for this. So we'll do section start. And I'm just going to change the button a little bit to say order today. And let's go ahead and change the link on the button. There we go. Uh, can we change the style a little bit? Let's see. There we go. Okay, so we have the style updated a little bit, uh, and we can do a background style. Let's see. Let's just go ahead and make this a little lighter. There we go. Okay, so let's save this. And now let's go and view it on the front end. And we're gonna inspect this. And so the first thing we're looking for is section start, and we have one, two, three, four to the body. That's the same as Gutenberg. So that's probably either what Gutenberg does or it's related to the 2025 theme that we're using. So we can ignore that for now. Now let's continue with our section start. So we have our inner blocks wrapper, which we said is the same thing as breakdance. Then we have a div for an image with a figure with an image. So there's three divs here. Whereas, whereas the rest of the page builders only had the one image and Gutenberg had a figure with an image. So there's an extra div that exists here. And then let's go ahead and look at our container. We have a div with our H2. So again, there's another extra div. And then we have a div with a div with a div with a div with an A tag with a div. So this is a great example of actual divception. We have one, two, three, four, five extra layers until we get to this order today text. This is more than what we've 
seen in any of the other page builders. And there's probably some extra divs here that could be condensed into one. So overall Spectra didn't do terrible, but the button really added a lot of extra divs. Now let's go ahead and look at Divi. We'll start by adding a new row and we will add our image. We'll set that. And before I forget, let's go ahead and set the ID of our section. And can we do the background? Let's see. Oh, it's under content. Okay. Uh, so we're going to add a background. Oh, I got to use the, that. Wait. Okay. So we got that. And now let's make this a little bit lighter. Sure. That's good. Okay. Let's do a heading and we're going to say, welcome to the bakery. And then we're going to add a button and the button is going to say order today with a link that goes to there. We can try and change the button a little bit. Okay, here we go. Uh, so we've had the button background and the button text. We're just going to make white and we'll make the button border black. Okay. So we got a little bit of a customization there. Let's go ahead and select the parent column. And I'm just going to look to see if we can center everything. I don't know how easy this is to do in Divi. It doesn't look too easy. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip trying to get that to work. So now let's save this and we pretty much have what we want. I did want this to be centered, but we didn't get that. And let's view it on the front end. So we'll be testing Divi five, which is the newest version. It's still in beta. So I know a lot of people will probably be using Divi four, but we want to check out this brand new builder that they're working on and to look at how the deception is and how much extra HTML exists on the page. So with our page loaded, let's go ahead and look at our section start. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven divs before we get to our section. So that's more than what we've seen in Gutenberg. That's a, quite a bit of extra items here. And let's continue. So we have our intersection element, which is pretty normal. And then we have our first extra div. So with Divi, this was the first page builder that we couldn't just have the image element outside of a container. It had to be within another container. Next, we actually have the image itself. We have an extra container here. Then we have a span and then we have the image. So not only do we have collectively two extra divs, we also have an image inside of a span. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at the rest of our stuff. Again, we have our column, which is what we've seen before. Then we have a div with the div with our heading. So there's two extra divs here that we didn't need before we got to the heading. Then for the button, we have a div with an A tag and that's actually it. So just one div for the button. So it's actually better than what I expected considering the fact that the heading had two extra divs. The button only has one. So let's now look at Elementor, which a lot of people use. Let's just go ahead and see how Elementor does. So we're going to start with a Flexbox layout. Actually, let's go ahead and do a grid layout. And let's do two. Now let's add an image element in that side. And then over here, we're going to add a container and we're going to add a heading and a button. Let's drag that onto our page there. So with this all set up, let's go ahead and add our content. Here's our image. Welcome to the bakery, not the bankery. Welcome to the bakery. We'll set our text to order today and our link. And what else do we want to do? We want to center all this. So let's go ahead and do that. And then for our grid, we want to add the ID section start. And let's go ahead and see if we can choose a background. Oh, I don't want a media. I want a color. 
and we're going to go ahead and make that lighter. Let's go ahead and publish this, and now let's view it on the front end. Okay, let's inspect Elementor, and let's find our section start. Okay, here it is. So we have one, two to the body. So we have an extra div here that doesn't exist in some of the other page builders. Then we have our inner content element, which is normal and expected. And next we're hoping this to be an image element. So we have a div with a div with an image. So we have a div with a div and an image. So we have two extra divs here uh, because we were hoping for this to just be an image right up here, but there's two extra divs that Elementor adds here. Let's go ahead and look at our other elements. So we have our container, which is expected. Then we have another div here with another div with our heading. So we have two extra divs for our heading. We expected it to just be an H tag. So right now we're up to, I believe it is four extra divs just within our content. Let's now look at the button. Let's open on this up all the way. So to get to our order today, we have one, two, three, four, five extra divs. Uh, this could just be an A tag, but instead we have one, two, three, four divs just until we get to our A tag. Then we have a span within a span. So we have a lot of extra elements here on our page that didn't need to exist. This also means that there's going to be extra CSS for each of these classes. We have one, two, three classes, four classes, five classes, six classes, seven classes, eight classes, nine classes, 10 classes. That's 10 classes of CSS that we had to add. So that's quite a few extra divs and even classes and other content that we have to load to get this button to work. And as you can imagine, as you build your page out further, you're going to find more and more elements on your page. That also means more CSS. That also means more JavaScript and other things. And that's going to continue to increase the load time of your page. While you can get almost any of these page builders to run spectacularly, by having a lower bloat page builder such as Oxygen that doesn't have a lot of divs, that doesn't have a lot of extra content that you need to load, you don't have to spend as much time optimizing your site as you will with some of these other page builders.